Welcome to another thrilling instalment of It's Football Not Soccer with the four of us again. We're going to just tell you a little bit about the maddest week in sports ball that you're ever likely to see <laughs> with the most ridiculously long injury list that we're just not going to go through in any great depth. <laughs> it's, it's outrageous. Yeah. So, Ben's Browns this week did Ooh, a thing. Finally decided to play some football. And an irrelevant game as well. Wow, well, definitely, definitely. If you're going to win one, you may as well win the divisional game away. Yeah. It's yeah. not just that though, is it? That's quite a big scalp because the Ravens were probably going to be looking to win their division, possibly be a Super Bowl contender. You really know. good. Yeah. Well, we all back the Ravens to win that. Even yeah. I, I thought the Ravens yeah. were going to take that. But they just they got got ahead, stayed ahead, and they, they managed yeah. the game from there. Remarkable, really. And they didn't give up a million yards in penalties. That's yeah, definitely a difference between the previous weeks, isn't yeah. it? It's tightened up their play discipline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that defence, it's good. You know, it, it allows... Somebody else's team had a glorious coup this week as well, didn't they? Oh, didn't, glorious did, coup? Yeah, didn't the Eagles do rather well? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they did all right. She, she's always good. <laughs> <laughs> That was a cakewalk. I yeah. didn't need, need a touchdown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Eagles had a good win. The Eagles had a good win. Uh, the Ravens, before we move on, do you think maybe losing to the Chiefs when they give it the roll has maybe sapped something from them? Oh, do you think this is, do you think this is it? The, the maybe, Chiefs beat people. Maybe, this is the hangover now. Yeah, yeah the hangover. The Browns. Yeah. Maybe so. Maybe yeah, so. Maybe. The Chiefs, but the Chiefs beat you so hard, they beat you for two games. <laughs> 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 It might be interesting to have a look at it. Yeah. 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 Play the Chiefs. Play yeah. But the Eagles did have a good week. It was a, a good game against the uh, the Green Bay Packers. Um, and the Packers defence looked like they came apart. Yeah. They solid. It has been a really prominent defence for the first three weeks. They've looked really good. And yeah. then they weren't. Jordan Howard just took them to town. They, you really can run all over that Packers defence. Yeah. That's, that's what you We was catching the ball as well, receiving yeah. touchdown. Yeah, yeah apparently... Can't, can't catch thing, a ball. Yeah. yeah, Jordan Howard now doesn't catch balls. Yeah. As someone who went sort of heavily bet on Miles Sanders to do well this season, I was absolutely gutted with how well Jordan Howard played because he was um, he was really good. Really yeah, good. And, and a lot of Jordan Howard owners would have been disappointed having him. He was benched. Yeah, he would be benched. Ninety four percent of the leagues. Yep. The guy I was playing did not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm put up a 30 point <laughs> game <against. laughs> My Jaguars did exceptionally well this week. Did not lose to the Broncos. Maybe. Continue making them look bad. <laughs> Maybe in contention for one of the worst teams this year, the Broncos. Yeah, it's really a hard thing to say that is though. It feels really mm. unfair, like because they don't feel like they should be on a team. Paper, yeah. They, like, they look formidable on defence. And, yeah, and their their record is the same as the Skins, the Dolphins. Who look like yeah, disasters, Bengals, Cardinals. Yeah. You know these are yeah. bad teams with very little going on. All their star players are out, and then then there's the Broncos. And who are we blaming? Are we blaming the quarterback? Are we blaming the manager? I think it's a new scheme taking time to bed in. I mean, it's not that Vic Fangio's a bad coach by any stretch. Well, there was talks that the team imploded after the game. Apparently, you could hear yeah. them, you could hear them arguing like in the hallway outside. Yeah. It was that bad. Um, I mean, everyone should be the Jacks, right? Yeah, <laughs> the, well, yeah they, they've lost it. a big player with Bradley Chubb. Yeah, that's a massive yeah. player for them. I think one of their other players was saying he's done after the year with the Broncos anyway. I think that might have been Chris Harris. You know, Fuck, oh. that's a big loss. Yeah, so it doesn't doesn't it look, look good too bad for them there, yeah. um, but then. There was signs the defence was starting to take shape. They were getting the first mm -hmm. sacks. They were yeah. start, starting to look like they were putting it together a little bit. Fournette cut them up, though. Ooh, he absolutely wow. cut them up. Like, uh, who here had him for a 200-plus yard game against yeah. anybody, let alone oh, me, the, the me, Broncos? Totally me. I, got so <laughs> <much better. laughs> I didn't think he was capable of that in his career. <laughs> <laughs> but he looked so pedestrian. In those first two games, it was like someone had just... just just yeah, a bucket of water over his gave head. Gave a yard, lost yeah. two yards. It was yeah. very nitty gritty. Whereas he came back and he looked like the Fournette who was a first round draft pick who, who yeah. could yeah. rely and I, think, on. I think part of that is um, Minshew getting him involved in the passing game a little bit as well because he's, he's become relevant there, especially in PPR. Well, I was listening to an interview that uh, Fournette did the other day and 
they questioned him and said, you know, are you deliberately more involved in the passing game? And he said, no, Gardner just does what he wants. Sometimes he throws to me. <laughs> <laughs> Good. And he says, so it is you know, is Gardner a bit of a character then? He, he's a bit of a goofy kind of a guy, a bit of an oddball. Is he that kind of guy in the huddle as well? Does he just do what he wants? And he's like, no, no, he's he's dead professional. He just spreads the ball around and yeah, you yeah. know, makes sure that you know people people kind of kept guessing. So it isn't just a case of you know we've got a couple of good players. Let's just keep playing to them. No, good. He, he just says, I'm going to make this work, guys. It's fine. I've got this, um, and that's what happens. He's looking really good. Yes, yeah. I mean, the, there was a particular play where. The line just broke down, and he oh, evaded and he about with four yeah. different yeah, to throw the touchdown. Tackles. And these aren't just run of the mill tackles; these are really, really good, <laughs> really good defensive players. Yeah, and then threw a touchdown pass at the end of it. That yeah. was unbelievable. That was an yeah. incredible play. That was. But um, he doesn't uh, look particularly athletic. I mean, he's got very muscular legs. I won't lie, I've got him in shoe. He's got exceptionally <laughs> muscled legs, right? But you look at the rest of him, and he's like. He seems a bit outside to be yeah, you know, yeah, like that. Does, yeah. yeah. You know, you could expect to see him perhaps, you know, rocking a tank top on the beach and just chilling yeah. out and that's the kind well, of physique he, that he's he got. He turned up to an event in, in jorts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Men in shorts. Yeah, so like Daisy Dukes man, yeah. he was rocking it. <laughs> but yeah, the, the guy clearly doesn't give a shit, man, and he rocks no. it. But yeah, it was wild. Yeah, it was like yeah. I honestly expected to not be winning that one at all. It was a, it was a good back at the end. Sean, Cal, yeah, I don't think you. Fourth, fourth quarter me. comebacks are not a thing for the Jags. No. I mean, Bortles threw that out of there for so long. Yeah. He said, we, we can't do that. I'm not a quarterback that leads to comebacks. It's not my thing. <laughs> and God was like, what? What? You want me to do what? Yeah, sure. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Whatever you like. Yeah, so Jags, great week. Yeah. Oh, but then Bills then. Yeah, the Bills, the Bills. Uh, it was a frustrating game to watch yeah. because it was there in our the grasp of our fingers and just so many, so many stupid, silly mistakes on offence. Is just that after gifted. Josh Allen came out though? No, before. It yeah. was better when we had Barkley in. Okay, through an interception, but it wasn't a silly interception like like Josh Allen was throwing on first and ten and he's trying to drop a 40-yard bomb down the field into two-man coverage. <laughs> you wouldn't make a pass like that. It's not a pass you try. You don't need to. You need to be sensible with the ball, run a bit more, Especially give it to goal. Yeah, because, I mean, their defence up to now has been prominent and offensive and, yep. and aggressive. and mm. yeah, So, yeah. very silly. Very silly. The Bills should have won that game, but we gifted it to the Patriots, I yeah. think. I think, um, I think a lot of experts are with you on that one as yeah, well. Yeah, no, uh, totally. It, it was, was it was definitely the the Bills losing that game rather than the Patriots winning. It. Yes, yeah, yes, that's how I yeah, describe it too. Well, they had the Patriots had to get that touchdown from their defense. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Without that, they, they won. No, no field goals we held them to. They had yeah. no offensive touchdowns on us, which. To hold Brady to this, to less than 150 yards. We, we spoke so about it last week, though, that their offense wouldn't be up to a great deal. No, no, we, and it, we and did. It really that, wasn't. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, they, it, they did nothing. I think, I think you'd have been surprised to see how badly Tom Brady did against this. Defense. The Bills are a good defense. Yeah. So the the kind of cookie cutter plays they were playing, they weren't trying to trick them or anything. They were just trying to catch them out on you know maybe, maybe something falling, and then beating on the defence which is kind of what they did with it really mm. that's Bill Belichick's game plan Yeah, the don't game. give anything away offensive no. beat you on the defence the game was Sony Michel a lot of the ball and he was breaking yeah. tackles yeah in, in fact his first broken tackle actually yeah this, yeah this year on his first run of game as well a healthy I'm single ashamed. Terry and do they take that game he's healthy single Terry's oh, healthy yeah. would they have run the ball more would or, Alan have or with an less? unhealthy Josh Allen, would we have won the game? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can see. We got out a bit sooner. <laughs> We've been banging the Josh Allen drum for no, three no, weeks I, now. I, I, <laughs> he, he was just very silly. Very silly. It's a game. young quarterback in a very high pressure situation. He though. is, but he's played them before and he's given up interceptions soon before. He wasn't he playing was. them with a no loss record. No, true, true. Yeah, well, that's quite that a added, big thing yeah, to hold on yeah, to, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I think he just wanted to go out all guns blaze and show this defence that he wasn't afraid of him, but yeah. he should have been. Yeah, did it wrong. <laughs> but everyone should be scared of the Patriots defence. Good God, yeah. They've been outstanding yeah. this year. Yeah. Really have. Yeah. So we we had a pretty weird week overall though, didn't we, with some, you know, upset results and things like that going on. Football wasn't what we expected it to be for the week. 
uh, which is good in its own peculiar way. But for fantasy, it meant that things were scoring very high that we wouldn't have expected them to, and scoring very low that we were pissed off about, to be quite frank. Yeah. Um, my week was very scary as I had to face off against Nick Chubb, who went absolutely ballistic. Yeah, me uh, too. And I thought I was going to lose, lose to a total scrub team. That's right, Shal. You're a total scrub. <laughs> <laughs> but don't worry, Shal. He called my team total scrub. Uh, that is as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's did very well this week, thank you very much. Well, it will, won't it, if you've got these scrub players that come good once a year. <laughs> so, it got weird. Um, and I think an overall review of the fantasy scoring from our leagues is that it was a big downturn on previous scoring weeks where the players that you were playing weren't scoring. Uh, we've got a lot of scores that were coming in at like 60s and 70s for the week, yeah. which mm-hmm. is pure trash, with one of the leagues even having a, a, an actual team score 40 points. Yeah, um, these teams didn't fare too well there. No, no, it didn't work out too well at all. You know, when, you, when you've got players like uh, Beckham and Hopkins and Brady coming in for like three points apiece. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. Thielen. Yeah. Thielen as oh, well. he yeah. bombed hard this mm-hmm. week. Um, and Dick's got the uptick. Well, he even, yeah. he even called out Kirk Cousins, didn't he, at the end yeah, of the game? Yeah, he's furious. Mm-hmm. You need to be able to throw the ball in this league uh, when you need to, and we've not been doing that. Yeah. yeah. But there was all kinds of running backs who just didn't get the workload as well. Well, like it was there really was definitely sweaty. the points were there, but they just weren't coming from the sources you were expecting them to That's come it. from. I mean, Pope. Pope scoring a touchdown. <laughs> Mal- <laughs> Malvin Gordon's back, and Pope scoring a touchdown for the Chargers. Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. going yeah. on? Did he, get, did he get any snaps? Gordon. I Gordon. think he did, yeah, did he? No. The field. He was an emergency. An emergency. Backup, wasn't but he? Yeah, apparently, Justin Jackson went down. Before. Playing Pope in front of him doesn't constitute an emergency. <laughs> so, <laughs> quite quite going going off the depth. Charges backfield yeah. is very good, what can I say? That's it, yeah. <laughs> no, it's a, a strange one, with, but there's quite a few of them, like Carry On. You know, he gets all the way up to the goal line, doesn't get his touchdown, doesn't get a look in for the rest of the day. I think they got to the red zone like in the five yard lines four or five times after that oh, right. and they just didn't talk to him after well, that he's, he's, he's never that kind of player for them though is he well they give it to him on the goal line for when he fumbles yeah, yeah. they haven't got anyone else though I mean he's now taking they've got that Ty Johnson haven't they yeah but I mean he's on sort of like a 70 75% snap share yeah, yeah. nice yeah, so they want fine. him as the bell he's count. definitely improved since they, yeah. since yeah. they cut CJ there's Darrell Williams stealing the touchdowns from yeah. folks. It, yeah. It's all over the place at the moment. There's only a, a couple of people who, uh, from the running backs who've scored like you expected. And yeah. Yeah. The points are spread out a lot more than they normally are. I mean, I think we should make an honorary mention for Cal's uh, four net. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, the points are there. <laughs> They're just not coming from places you'd expect. A 200 plus yard four net rush for 225 yards, I think. Gosh. Is that oh, from it might have been his total yardage yeah. was 225 but yeah. he, caught, he caught a few catches as part of it uh-huh. but he, he got a lot of yardage but didn't get a touchdown mm-hmm. instead didn't his back up Raquel Armstead oh, yeah, is yeah. given like five yards and a touchdown yeah. sure whatever guys yeah. whatever no yeah, problem yeah, no, Armstead the vultures had eight carries 42 yards yeah. a reception and a touchdown that's yeah. right but it, it was the it was the touchdown carry that really <laughs> inflated his points it was a pass uh, that's right, yeah. 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 Just like to say, Jameis Winston put up a lot of points again. Yeah. Almost yeah. Really yeah. Did you points. Did. Or did you? Oh, I've, I've dropped him. Yeah. Oh, I've dropped him. <laughs> and I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to pick him up this week because um, they play the Saints. Yeah, yeah. That's not a tough one. I, I think have, that's a great mm. week to pick them up because last year's game, Bucks Saints, was a huge shootout, mm. and I'd be willing to take the punt on that. Yeah. Uh, but we could probably get into something like that yeah. in a short while. Um, it's been a weird week of football. That's what we're going to say, yeah? Oh, yeah. yeah? It's been a weird week for fantasy. The Bills lost. How weird can you I get? Know. Well, that, I, I mean, that as a trend. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Bills losing, Browns winning. Yeah. <laughs> I okay, like well. how the trend's, uh, the trend's going. Well, because my players did quite well, you know. I've, it's got I, to end. It's got to end. Yes, yes, <laughs> Chubb, Carson, great plays. Godwin, fantastic. Oh, yes, Godwin. Thank Godwin. You, that brings us neatly on. That thank goes. you. That brings so us neatly on. Okay, so so because someone last week wasn't happy with Chris Godwin's performance, they dropped him in the league, which I picked up, and immediately rostered the guy into my lineup and thought, that guy's going to have a hell of a time. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Now, remember before when we were talking about Diggs being dropped in one of the leagues and him being immediately yes. picked up? 
well, he's been played and he started to do all right as well. What we have seen this week in the weird world of fantasy football is that someone has dropped Tyreek Hill. It went on to a waiver in one of our leagues. AJ Green has been dropped. He's a hot property. You know? Yeah, yeah. These will not... These will be fought over on the waiver wire. So Damn if you have been losing to now, there's some joy in in the golden egg of a Tyreek Hill or an AJ Green further down the line, perhaps. I think it's something to say to, to players. If they pick up a player like Tyreek Hill and they hold them for a few weeks, sometimes you've just got to ride it out. Yeah. Don't pay the price for someone else to then drop them, for them to pick them up and reap the benefits. Sacrifice roster spots. Yeah. You know, especially as a person who dropped him, it's three and one. Yeah, it's you panic, afford, panic yeah. mode, isn't it? Yeah, but you're three, you're three wins up. You, well, yeah, but you, it's you you're holding think, oh, on I'll to. Just write it out. I'm, I'm pretty comfortable at the minute. Um, you see joint people top. coming and going off the waivers, and you're looking at your lineup week after week and thinking, "Oh, I've got to, I've got to do something to mix it up. I've got to bring something in." And then in a moment, you drop someone who you really shouldn't to pick up. Something you really shouldn't. James Crowder. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's done all right. You know, Crowder's been all right. But uh, he's no yeah. Tyree Kill. No. You know, you, you, no. You, that's too much of a loss. You don't drop him. I, I've got Tyreek in two leagues, and I haven't even thought about dropping him. No, he doesn't. got AJ much. Green in one, and I wasn't yeah. going to drop him. I used his trade value. Yeah. I was never going to drop him. No. I mean, if I was absolutely desperate to pick up a particular player, I would just not play a defence for the week. Yeah. Just leave the open roster yeah. spot and... Suck it up for the week, because you yeah. know that if you're making it to the playoffs... It's difficult. If you're not going to make it to the playoffs, then... It almost doesn't matter. It's anyway, so why are you getting rid of the big player? But the That's moral it. of the story is to really investigate your waiver wire. Definitely. See who's yeah. being dropped, see who's yeah. being picked up. So, well, we're coming into week five... It's like a, a third of the way into the season nearly. Some people are taking their eye off the ball. They're not looking at the waivers all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, It's easy to miss a day with it. And in that day, Tyree Kill can drop onto the waivers and you miss out. Yeah. It's, it's almost like you should have a fantasy regime to your week where you know what you've got to check at what point in the week. Yeah, definitely. Like a schedule set up to remind you, check your waivers. Yeah. Yep, yep. It's Tuesday night. Make, make sure you're checking your waivers. So whenever it gets to waiver day, that's the first thing I do on my phone. I'm like, click, 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 click. Oh, someone's dropped a tasty morsel. Oh, I'll try and get that. <laughs> but I won't make it because waivers don't clear for another two days. And I'm top of the leagues, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you lose the playoffs, right? Uh, that's right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll get to the end and drop out. It'll be lovely. Um, so, yeah, the, the take-out message from that is, is that weird things happen and then people in response do weird things yeah. don't be one of them be vigilant <laughs> be vigilant on that keep your eye on the waivers mm. yeah keep your eye on the waivers so the injury report was like everyone yeah like everybody this week is injured yeah there's a heck of a Feel, lot feels like a third of all of my teams are just down <laughs> like I'm crippled I like T.Y. Hilton. T.Y. Yeah. Hilton's injured at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he missed last week as well. Uh, but he was questionable. Quads. He was a uh, questionable right up until the we last went doubtful. the week yeah. before, in week three. We went doubtful this week, Ended up right playing. before, yeah, and, and then got pulled yeah, right before yeah. the game. But it's yeah. a quad injury, and any kind of muscle injury, it's really difficult. You know, you, you can try and run on it. Trigger it sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's safer to keep him out. The weird one with that was, was that Colts... Played a really pass heavy week without T.Y. Hilton. Oh, um, testament to Brissett, perhaps, you know, because he's, he's been all right. He's, he's scored, been capable, he's scored uh, multiple touchdowns yeah. every week this, this year, which is more than Mahomes has done. Oh. Has he thrown more <laughs> touchdowns than Mahomes? No. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> has he thrown that. more yards <laughs> than Mahomes? Has he won more games than no, Mahomes? But he's, no, yeah, but he's, yeah, he's done all right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so but that does go to Mac, who's also potentially on the injury list we're not too sure what's going on with him well because this is Colts based injuries we've got other players who are going to come in and take up the slack now Chester Rogers actually came in and did alright caught some balls was reasonably yeah. productive for fantasy <clears throat> so you know if you are in a bit of a pinch you might be expecting to get sort of 10-15 point weeks out of Chester Rogers who won't be owned in your league you know he's a nobody no. Paris uh, Campbell too yeah maybe. maybe I think he had kind of a Dud game where he dropped a few passes and fumbled once. Uh, and, right, okay. You know, he was kind of taken off the yeah. the list of hot targets. Uh, but, you know, with no one else to go to, potentially. You know, and Pascal's. 
That's right. And Pascal was another one who got a bit tight at the start. So, you know, there's a bit of opportunity in the Colts there to be picking up players who could score well. The offense is still capable, even though luck isn't there. Yeah. So these are fantasy relevant players. Yeah. Um, Do you start to look at Ebron? You should have been already, I think. Yeah, yeah Ebron should yeah. be owned. Definitely. Doyle's doing Doyle things know, okay ish. Yeah. He's yeah. a serviceable tight end yeah. most of the time. Most of, yeah, he's probably not gonna give you a duck egg at the end of the day. You'll yeah. probably get three to six points and he and he got a touchdown. touchdown upside. Um so he's not I am finding he's ending up on a lot of my rosters when my tight end is down. Yeah. Thank you, Vance McDonald. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, absolutely. <laughs> um I mean we could talk about the Steelers injury situation now. Yeah, 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 it's looking like Connor might be out, might be missing a week. Yeah, oh, so that's... Connor's been knocked up and tends to be like it's every week. It's banging up. He's been questionable, mm-hmm. isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it's the right thing to say, but his cancer recovery probably took a lot out of the guy. So, oh, sure. And this was certainly something that was mentioned before, where he he's, might yeah, not play I, a full season. Yeah, I don't think he's done that to date, has he? Even in college. I don't, I don't think he's been no, he, he, he played most of last season, I think, didn't he? he? Did, I don't, I don't he, think he, he missed really anything. really tailed at the end. He, but, he, missed, but, he missed a few games at the end of the season. Same time with the, any running back who is used as a ball sure, through yeah, the season yeah, yeah, yeah. tends to True. get that kind of thing True. happening. But I think he's had that... I mean, the, yeah, the flag was raised on the subject of yeah. whether or not his body was it had the fortitude to be able to deal with that workload. And like I say, it's not an unkind thing to say about a guy who's had to no, deal with no, something so horrible. So ama- amazing what he's been able to do. That's right. But you know, something to be wary of for fantasy owners when mm. you pay, especially his first round ADP coming into the season. Yeah. You know, this was a player that may not see the whole season out, and yeah. you know, we're starting to perhaps see that. And who do we think inherits the touches in this circumstance? Clearly, Jalen Samuels had a decent week. Oh, mm-hmm. definitely. Yeah, yeah. He's definitely uh, somebody to look out for on your waiver wire, Jalen yeah. Samuels. Yeah. Yeah. Almost like he'd be all right in Dynasty as well. But I know, right? That's a different matter. <laughs> who wins him, do you think? <laughs> oh, I'm not too sure. <laughs> you <Yeah, laughs> they, they even brought Snell in, didn't they, for a snap? But you got tackle for a loss did he <laughs> excellent uh, he just for a little look uh, so yeah the, the Steelers situation is a little bit fluid at the moment they've got a change of quarterback change of running back change of receiver yeah. change of tight end uh, it's all turning weird um, they look good though well against the well, Bengals they, they, they look the good. Bengals made them look good yeah. that's all we can say yes. for certain yeah. <laughs> I immediately retract. <laughs> yes. um, big profile player that's come down as well, though, is Devontae Adams. May or may not be missing time with Turf Toe. Yeah. yeah. I th- it can be a couple of weeks with it's Turf Toe. It's a mess. funny one. Yeah, it's a weird one as well because it aggravates very easily. Mm. So it can feel like a player's recovered from it, oh, only to it, run out yeah, and run for a bit. Yeah, it doesn't take much before it yeah. triggers. Yeah. That's a, it, it's a sneaky one because turf toe sounds so like yeah, it's so silly. Yeah, silly, silly it, yeah. it's one toe. of the most <laughs> painful things you can do with your foot. Yeah. <laughs> so who do we think inherit touches there then? Well, Allison and MVS. Allison's the, getting the touchdowns, but he was getting the touchdowns two. with Adams on the field. Yeah. So maybe MVS. We we think of Jimmy Graham up tickers. Yeah, as well. yeah, definitely. As to be said, with these injuries comes opportunity for other mm. players. So they and typically he's definitely been. Ruled out. Ruled out. Adams, yeah. well, yes, he has. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Turf, yeah. 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 against he, the Cowboys. Yeah. So, as soon as he finished start one, he took his boot off and didn't wear his. Boot well, he didn't finish the game. Yeah, yeah. He but as soon as he was taken out, his yeah. boot was off and he didn't. Have uh, shoe yeah. on you could rest. see him on the floor. He was yeah. holding his foot. They said oh, to him, no. you know, "You've got your shoe off." <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah, it's too painful to keep it on." Yeah. So yeah, he can't even put a shoe on at the moment. Yeah, we've got quite a few of other players who were who are ruled out with it, particularly. And the uh, the tight end for me that's worrying is Hawkinson just by the, just mm. by the injury because oh, when he went down like he, he hit hit the, the floor and he didn't move oh boy like he I just didn't see it lay still yeah and it looked looked like something real bad had happened but he, he slowly started to move and then he he was up and about oh. so it looked like maybe he just winded himself but words come out it's a concussion with it yeah it's it's going to rule him out for a fair few weeks I think with that one. I'm pretty sure Josh Allen got knocked the fuck out during the game. Yes, didn't he, he did. Yep. Yes, he did. Yeah. Another concussion. Proper KO. He's out. still in the concussion protocol. Yeah. Yeah. So, he should uh, stay in there for a little while because <laughs> I'm not sure he knows where he it is. You don't have a good game. <laughs> well, well, me and you were watching at the time when that out. Yeah. Right? And we, and he, Whoa. <laughs> the, the way the way he got hit, he looked looked bad. Yeah. Like it looked bad. But then he got he up and walked right. off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he looked yeah, all right. Yeah. And you're thinking. 
people have got to take him aside and go and yeah. check him because he might look all right. But oh, he no went straight way. in the tent. Something <laughs> pretty serious happened to Christian Kirk as well, didn't it? He hurt his leg. It wasn't as serious as it looked at the time, but he turned his leg over, yeah. So he might have an ankle injury. But they're saying it's not that bad. But not then, that bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's there's talk that it, it's he's actually all right, and it just looked nasty. But okay. if if you have the misfortune to to look at it, oh, that's grisly. It's grisly. Now these these three injuries are useless for fantasy purposes because if Hawkinson's injured, there isn't a tight end that comes in and replaces him. So you don't need his backup. If Josh Allen gets injured, do we really want a part of Barkley? Probably not. Oh, no. Only in the deepest of leagues. Yeah, he'd have to be yeah. exceptional, wouldn't it? Yeah, three QB starters. <laughs> now, Christian Kirk's injury might present more of an opportunity. Yeah, uh, Andy Isabella's been given the start. Yeah, but we're not sure how far that goes because the Cardinals really haven't been able to put that much together at this point. He's been throwing a lot of touchdowns, hasn't he? I mean, Fitz has been productive, yeah. which is good. It's nice for that right. guy to be... Mm. Keep it on going. And Kirk, uh, Christian Kirk hasn't been bad. Like, if you picked him up late rounds, he's been getting, like, 10-point weeks. He's been okay. relatively productive. Yeah. I wouldn't like to suggest that his backup will come in and take a similar workload and also come in with the same fantasy production, though. So it's a bit of a tricky one, that one. Yeah. I mean, do you want to be back in the Cardinals at this point? They're not exactly a high-flying offense. No, they're, no. Well, they're just slinging it, aren't they? Cal Murray has been a startable QB for you for... Yeah. A good number of the weeks. Yeah, Larry's still all right. Larry's, yeah, solid. David Johnson, David to an extent, you know. Well, he's a solid RB two now. I think yeah. is where he yeah. lies. He's found his feet. You know, he's certainly bottom of the elite pack, but he's definitely oh, yeah. above most of the, uh, the running backs that you could be rostering up yeah. in an RB two slot. Uh, so so <laughs> currently, uh, the projections for Austin Eckler are that he's going to score nineteen points in one of the apps. On another app, he's going to project to score about eight because Melvin Gordon's back. Oh, well, you can't know, can you really? That's just purely speculative at this point. And that's ultimately what these projections are, as well as the injury designations potentially as well. I think, to be honest, I think he still has a good week. I think he's still startable. Sure. And they'll start peppering in Gordon until he's a bit more... I think they want fit. to run the bloody wheels off him. They'll get him out there and they'll <laughs> just keep throwing maybe his so. defences. Maybe so. Because they've got nothing to lose. No. Um, because if he's going to be very, very difficult to re-sign, they're not going to be able yeah. to do it. Or they would have done a deal already. Um, yeah. So chuck him out there. Eckler, would he stand up to this pace all the way through the year? I don't know. Is there any point in them breaking him now if they're going to have to use him after Gordon goes? No, nah, I mm-hmm. reckon chuck Gordon out. But it depends yeah. on what kind of pace he's Maybe. at. Yeah, is it still it. taking... I think it's hit Zeke missing that time away yeah. from the team. Yeah, he seemed to be a slow... He's a step behind, so Gordon could be the same. Mm. He could be the same for I three, think four still weeks. Still looking to assess Malvin Gordon, not maybe he's, um, yeah. Where they do like a like a health or skill based assessment uh, of his performance, and I think they're still waiting to clear him off that at the moment. So he was going to be like an emergency play for the last week. But let's face it, you're not going to have that kind of emergency, are you, against the Dolphins? But do you want a bit of breaking rumor? Go on. Stefan Diggs didn't practice today. Okay. And there's rumours of a trade to the... Yeah, Patriots. You're right, Darren. Oh, God, it's always the Patriots, yeah, though, isn't it? There's always rumours to the Patriots. <laughs> I think I'd seen something about that earlier, actually. But I didn't think anything of it. I just We are at that point in the season, it. aren't we? Where the Patriots bring in a veteran who's maybe not been yeah. quite as good as... They do it Cooks. Did it with, they do it all the time. Yeah. It's like every year they bring another one in. Yeah, and they love it being like a nippy wide receiver who can really stretch got, the field. Because they've still got Cameron Mer- Meredith on the pop list. I'm not too uh-huh. certain on that. Because I'm fairly sure he's still there, but on the pop. So he'd be out till about week six. Because well, he had a good year with the, the Bears that, that time. We'll see how that pans out now. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but I did trade for Diggs this week and... Seeing that Diggs might be going to the Patriots makes me a little bit more excited about his future for the rest of the year. I'm I'm honest, just, I'm it just, should make you sceptical because I'm, it's going to be a packed play. More or less sceptical than catching balls from Kirk Cousins this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, does that make Thielen more prominent? I don't know. Makes Chad Beebe a bit more interested. Yeah. That's who it makes. And I think they've still got Laquan Treadwell there, haven't they? Oh, yeah, they resigned him again, didn't they, yeah. last Monday? Uh, the Patriots have had a very significant injury. Yes, they have. For people that still use kickers in their leagues, Goskowski. That's a very prominent one, but he has not been 
playing as Goskowski the past couple of weeks. He's missed four pats. Which is basically, well, basically the end of your career, isn't it? Yeah. You can't do that and not given, lose your job. Yeah, you need a, at least a 95% success rate yeah. with them. I mean, one-legged kickers are nailing them. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of embarrassing. And there's no way you carry... I mean, he might not even be injured. He might well, just if take him back and shot him. If they play the Bills again, they're going to need another kicker that's <laughs> serviceable. <laughs> or just another put blocker. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you need. <laughs> and lastly, we're going to talk about a player who's actually had a really, really high-level production on a really shit team who's now gone out which is John Ross destroyer yeah. of weeks uh, yeah yeah. stellar performance and others crashing down and this is to go with AJ Green's injury yeah um, an unproductiveness from Tyler Boyd uh, where he's last week yeah this one, this game against the Steelers but otherwise he's been yeah he's pretty he's, good yeah. yeah so despite the fact that the team is Certainly basically garbage they've had some fantasy performers that we can actually use and unfortunately John Ross was one of those and now isn't he made such a good catch in that game. Such a good catch that it's well worth going back and looking at on the highlights. Only to go out injured after. Especially because that's the story of his career, really. You know, he's going to struggle after this year, isn't he? If it's he's been gone on IR, hasn't he? So it's eight weeks at minimum, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a very droppable player, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. 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 Do, no hesitation. Yeah. Get him gone. Yeah. Well, this takes us into what we're going to do about these things. So we've seen that there's a load of injuries. There's more that we haven't named as well on other high-profile players. We could be here all yeah. night with it, yeah. Um, but what we're looking at now is some players that you may or may not have heard of to pick up as either replacements for these players or players on the rise in general. Some back from suspension. And that's it, isn't it? We've got some who are coming back from drunk driving issues or, you know, <laughs> or drugs. fertility drugs or, you know, some other bizarre thing that shouldn't really affect you game to game. So Chris Herndon for the Jets... Excited, yeah. He should be a good addition player. to their to their team. They need they need as much as they can get at the moment. Is Donald back? No, mm. he's training. He's training again. He'd probably be. He didn't get the clearance they needed last week, so I think he might be back. But he's he's training for the first time with throwing and everything, which he hasn't done since he contracted it because it really sort of knocked him for six. So he's not been throwing for four weeks. That that would be noticeable. Yeah. So I wouldn't I wouldn't expect them to start him this week. Yep. Um, I don't even know who they face. Because they had a bye Jets. week last week, didn't they? Jets are against the Eagles this week. Ooh. Not a good matchup. Mm. Difficult one. It's on the road as well, so mm. yeah, it's a tough one. I wouldn't like to be the Jets this week. No. Uh, yet. Mostly Stay away. Donald will come right. back and things will start to improve for them. I think more pressing than Donald coming back is CJ Mosley. Oh. still out yeah and he is such a vital part of that yeah. defence for them great yeah, player, player. Uh, but Herndon as a usable tight end in the next few weeks when Donald's back in business because the guys it may even be usable with Fork because what what I've noticed so far this year is with teams with bad offensive lines have been much more reliant on the tight end because they need a a short to need... your option exactly Typically, you'd use your check down receivers, which sure. are either running backs or tight ends for a lot of these shorter plays. So, like Waller for the Raiders, for instance, Definitely. he's been caning it. Yeah. So, while the Jets aren't a prolific offense, it might be reasonable to expect some level of production out of Herndon. And in yeah. the tight end position, you know, especially with some of the injuries that we've seen so far, he could be a decent replacement. So, um, what might be a very good replacement, though is uh, Ricky Seals-Jones at the Browns. Yeah. So we're seeing Odell Beckham draw a lot of coverage and everyone else basically be left open. We've got what may or may not be an injury to Jarvis Landry. Yeah, that's a... Uh, that'll so open up a concussion. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of concussions this week. Yeah. And Joku's definitely out. Yeah. Yeah, season, yeah. isn't it? So RSJ had a decent week and is probably going to see some... Decent amount of potential I would volume. Think, I would think he becomes quite fancy relevant. Yeah, and so I'm I'm a bit of a fan of that manoeuvre. However, this is also the week that Antonio Callaway comes back from his suspension. Yeah, um, whether and, that detracts and he, from... He was already third on the on the receiving chart. Today. That probably eats into Ratley, doesn't it? Higgins. Like, yeah, there's, a, right. there's a few sort of... Well, uh, mm. on the, they, they've on got the a running back with Hilliard who was kind of the receiving running back in a lot of situations um, and he's been given touchdowns and stuff through the early weeks. So there are a lot of 
semi-relevant Browns players. And in the in the potential absence of someone like Landry, I think we're going to see an uptick for a lot of other players. Yeah. So that's a team to watch. Because uh, he got a lot of targets last week as well, didn't he? Landry was so just shitting talk. business all over the place. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He was getting, he was eighteen yards up. Um, he was the main go-to. Yeah. But that's because they were covering. Yeah. so well. Yeah. 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 So he was he was open in the middle of the field often. But yeah, will they work OBJ into it more? Yes, I think they will. I think they'll try and scheme to get him more open. He is going to want to get more targets. He's not going to be like, oh yeah, I'm well, happy with other people. Gain the ball. That's me. I'm reasonable, ABJ. Yeah. Well, to be fair to the guy, he kind of is. He kind of I is. I think it helps that he's he he's good friends with Landry. Oh yeah. yeah. So he like, doesn't mind that where it, where it's going. I guess. Yeah, and like Landry's been open in in supporting him, saying like, you know, but look what you're doing for me, bro. You know, that's yeah. that sort of behaviour. And, you know, maybe OBJ's good with that as long as they're winning games, especially high-profile games against the Ravens. Oh, yeah, when, as is, long as they're winning. Yeah. That's right. If they start to lose, Andy isn't getting the ball, then, yes, I expect noise. Well, if Landry is out, and then, really, Callaway's looking like he's going straight back in, because Higgins not being in last week yeah. was a big deal. There's Why was, no, he, was he injured, though? Uh, inactive with his knee with it. And he, he might be, again, with it. Yeah. Callaway might be straight in. That I would be, imagine he would be, be but he's a risky player at best. You know, he's, I know. I, he loves a drop. Oh, he loves a drop. He, he was okay last year, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, he had his moments, but he's very, very hit or miss. But he him, stretches him the Baker, field. Him and Baker seem to be getting on reasonably well, though, didn't they? Oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah, they, yeah. they had a bit of a, got a yeah, thing chemistry, going. yeah. So, yeah. it, anyway, a play. A so, play. Uh, yeah. If you need a random flex player uh, <laughs> who might do something... Well, this is it. With these, a lot of these high-profile receivers going out, to getting someone that might be pulling in a touchdown or, you know, like a 60-yard grab, you know, if it is that this guy's going to be pulling in 10 to 12 points for your week, that might be enough. He's either going to hit 12 points or he's going to hit two points. I think that's, that's the problem, isn't it? But that's the problem with all of these replacements, guys and guys. Yeah, at Latin. If this last week was to go by, that could be anyone. I mean, yeah. even yes. the big guns were not firing. That's right. I mean, Hopkins was adored. Underwhelming. Mm. Golden Tate's back this week. That is yeah. a solid yeah. grab. She- but Shepard's been doing so well. Yes. Isn't it funny? There's lots of points to be had from the, the Giants. Uh, Giants. Yeah. Everyone's yeah. feasted on the Giants. <laughs> well, well, do you think the fact that there's no Barkley plays a part of that? That helps, that helps, because there's a lot more to go around. But sure. Goldman had a good week, Shepard had a good week. I just think that the games they're playing they tend to be quite open scoring mm. affairs. So, well, um, what what do we make of this notion that Barkley's coming back this yeah, week, next well, week? Yeah, he wants to be back against the Patriots, which I think is week six. As a I think we need to just <sighs> test Saquon Barkley to see if he's a mutant. <laughs> <laughs> he is back that yeah. quick. Yeah. Oh. Because he's got some sick regenerative powers. Yeah, because uh, four, uh, four to eight weeks was the initial sort of recovery time that they'd given him. If he's back in two and three... High ankle three, sprains are a nightmare, aren't they? they? Are, especially on a running back with all the cutting and what have you. It's very yeah. painful. The guy's um, just a freak. Yeah. You know. the reports today are that he was training he's like training, Barkley yeah. normally trains, yeah. like non-limited. Yeah, which is scary. I mean, really they've not is. ruled out him playing next week. They shouldn't play him next week. No. And they shouldn't play him the week they after, should, really. Should, let him, him let him recover. Just, yeah. yeah. We've got Goldman. Let's see what he can do a little bit because Dan's got him on his fantasy team. <laughs> 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 but they're playing the Vikings anyway, so... Yeah. 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 You know... Well, you know actually, that's a winnable game, though, with, with the way that the Vikings have been playing God, and just yeah. not scoring points particularly. Yeah. I mean, it looks like Very. they're imploding a little bit as well. Yeah. I mean, for a team that aren't exactly like doing terribly, they're really unhappy, or certainly the wide receivers well, are they, very unhappy. They've wrapped up so much money in Cousins in Ooh. Cousins and his receivers that the rest of the team is looking perhaps a little shy these days. Yeah. And if that's not working, if the massive investment of your dollars isn't paying off in points, you are naturally going to start looking around for someone to shout at. Yeah. And ultimately... You're all dependent on your quarterback to to eat, aren't you? You know, no matter how good a receiver you are, if you aren't being thrown the ball, you can't catch it. End of story. Thielen's called him out. Yeah, Dix yeah. might be leaving. Well, yeah, if that rumour is to be true. Yeah, it's come from a few. Uh, it looks like Sources. it's come from a few posts on social media. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. 
shouting stuff out and saying he's in charge of his own destiny. Oh, and he's putting himself in a picture of a white shirt. Oh, <laughs> God. You know, you know how it goes in the modern NFL. Another AB. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think he's hired his uh, air balloon or booked his cryo <laughs> pad yet. But who knows? <laughs> so we got here from Tate. There's the other Tate. Your your favourite Tate? My favourite yeah. Tate. Uh, Auden Tate at the Bengals. So I don't like the Bengals. I think they're a bad team. And I don't think you should have anything to do with them. However, they're putting up points. They are. Yards, they, at least. they are. They are getting some fantasy points on some yeah. of their players, which is relevant. And because everyone dismisses them as a piece of trash team, which they're right to, because they are, it means that people will often overlook players on their roster. I'm a big fan of picking up Gio Bernard, whatever it is that makes him goes out injured. I've said this before. Auden Tate at the moment looks like the inheritor of quite a lot of the offense over the last two weeks. He's been definitely relevant in their passing game either as the leading target or the leading productive receiver and that's before someone else goes out injured so now with someone else going missing yeah it's just going to be emphasised I don't know have they got that Damien Willis is that the other chap yes scratch that we probably want to just edit this oh uh, is he Auden Tate's out oh, <laughs> <laughs> breaking news breaking news <laughs> dirt, 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 dirt. there are no <laughs> receivers left in the Bengals <laughs> yeah we won't, I won't edit this out <laughs> boy it's your man <laughs> yeah I suppose what's left after that uh, Damien Willis yeah Damien Eifert. Willis Eifert's probably got some some more merit to him if yeah. he was struggling for a tight end I mean at this point Alex sure, Erickson oh good oh, grief yeah, people yeah, we're yeah. we are literally scraping the barrel He's uh, he's actually played for a few years, but he's never accomplished. It'd be anything. great if Diggs ended up at the Bengals instead. <laughs> no, oh, no, no, don't no. do that to me. <laughs> don't ruin a guy's career. That's <laughs> um, so yeah, there you go. Updates as they happen. Although you won't hear this till tomorrow, so you've probably had notifications through. <laughs> <laughs> well, you need to edit faster, mate, so we can stay <laughs> current. <laughs> well, no, it's just no one else talks about Orton Tate. So yeah. yeah, maybe yeah. This this happened Breaking yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 See, I even looked at him yesterday. So I must have looked at it just before it come out because I was looking at him thinking, do I pick him up? And I'm running a bit low on my receivers. Do I pick yeah. him up? He's, he's got some rele- relevance. Yeah, um, I remember he was at the Bengals. I looked elsewhere. Yeah. <laughs> but if if you're stuck, you know, you're 12 team league, you know, it's yeah. three wide receivers, flex spots. You might be scraping the barrel for some wide receivers now. Uh, has anyone got him in our dynasty? Yeah, yeah. Him yeah. In the dynasty. Me. In fact, Cal picked him up because I was after him and Cal had already picked him up ah. like the day before. Ah, yeah. smart move. Do it back. Yeah, so that's Tate out, so we're really scraping the barrel. <laughs> well, this is how quickly things move, isn't it? Where you constantly need to be looking at your waiver wires, wondering who the next player down the chart is. And ultimately, what we've seen, I think, especially someone like the Chiefs are a great example where any player that's listed as a starter or even a backup for them can be fantasy relevant week to week this isn't the week for this I put a lot of eggs into the Chiefs basket last week a yeah lot. yeah, you did didn't you a yeah. lot of, lot of you them. started Hardman didn't you oh yeah yeah. yeah. how did and, he score and Shady with it oh he was brilliant <laughs> absolutely brilliant what, what yeah. did he, how many points did he put minus, minus points yeah. minus, <laughs> minus what exactly it's 1.8 1.8 it's an ideal scoring that is isn't it negative yeah, yeah. So ev- everyone that was a Chiefs that wasn't on my team scored all right. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it was a horrendous week for it. But the Chiefs defense scored, which was nice with it. Darrell Williams scored, which was nice. How did the Chiefs defense do? Uh, the see. Chiefs defense got a, a pick six and well, a return fumble from the nice. from the carry on. So that was really questionable. That one. It, it should not have been like yeah. they're they're expert. They know what they're doing. Suspicious ref call. It kind of looks to me like another Chiefs player who was grounded picked the ball up while yeah. he, while he was being touched. But they didn't rule that. They they ruled it oh, when sweet. when another Chiefs player nabbed mm. it. Yeah, it was odd. He picks it up. He's clearly got it, but it is bobbling a little bit, so he's not got got Ball it secured. Mm. But the only reason he hasn't got it secured is because another Chiefs player picks it. It's a strange one. It's worthwhile yeah. having a little look at. Yeah, yeah. and it infuriated me because Mahomes would have got the ball from the one line, <laughs> one yard line, and you know it would have been. A huge try for him. Yeah. Could have thrown that, you know, 60 yards to Hardman. It would have been brilliant. In theory. But what we've seen from them is that they can plug in and play almost any player at yeah. any time. Yeah. And week to week, it's becoming difficult to know who that's going to be at the Chiefs. 
the same way as it is perhaps at the Patriots. Mm -hmm. So you've got very high scoring players that are hard to predict. I think we've had that problem with the Rams offense this time yeah. around as well. Yeah. Where Oof. we're looking yeah. at them and wondering which we, one's going to score we well. Knew with the wide receivers that it was a lottery. Certainly all of them should be a bit good, but one of them's probably going to go off week to week. Now Cooper Cup's getting a lot of targets, isn't he? Mm. Yes. Yeah, he is. But this is this is becoming, I think, more of a problem now we're dealing with some injuries for a lot of teams where you're wondering who's going to be getting the, the points week in, week out now. Who There's no logical first-line receiver that comes in to replace someone, so it can just be a, a fairly mixed field. So if you've got a decent-sized bench, it's probably worth investing in some of the players from these teams who were you know, reasonably high-scoring, but at the same time have got mixed replacements coming in. You know, maybe bank on a, a few eggs from those little nests mm. uh, and see how they sort of turn out. I mean, Gardner Minshew's turned out rather well. Yeah. <laughs> not but, many people foresaw that, though, I don't think, did they? No, no, um, not really at all. Jumping back to the Chiefs with it, Byron Pringle got his first actual real meaningful involvement and looked quite good with it. Well, yeah, that just which is, that I was going to say, further, which is it? just to muddy it <laughs> even more, because that means that once Tyreek's back, there's five legitimate receivers on that team. Do you not think he'd just revert back to default? And oh yeah, it'd go to Hill, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, no, you, you, well, as a Hill owner, you're hoping <laughs> you <laughs> I've put so much investment into him. If it's not, yeah. you know, fifteen targets a game for Hill, I'm going to be crying. It's that's the thing. It's it's not been one no. consistent performer. And Sammy Watkins did not look good last week. He went like back he to did. Being Sammy Watkins. He went back to being Sammy Watkins, the player that the Bills moved on. And you just when you get that one exciting week where he drops like 40 points though you can't help but think well I want hold of this guy I'm going to add him to my rosters I'm going to try and play sure. the guy because even because just half of that again is fine especially if you've benched him that week I think you feel more of an obligation to play him and get your yeah. points out of him because if you benched him that week one which I know Jay I think did yeah yeah you feel annoyed with yourself for yeah. wasting 40 points so you hold on for that big game that he's going to have again and you end up Rams. holding on to him longer than you, you That's need it, yeah. to, and then you've stung yourself in the tail because he's not performing. It's getting attached to your players when That's they do it. well for yeah. you. It's so easy to do with the game. Yeah. And really, you want to go with the stats, you want to look at how they've done, forget the names, but you I don't can't, want to. I, can't, I personally can't be that ruthless. If, if I, I, have been, I have been, but now I'm too invested. <laughs> <laughs> I know who they are now. <laughs> if I was a sensible Sammy Watkins owner after week one, I would have been trading trade, trade trade. Yes. Yeah. Then you would have known what to do with Absolutely. him. Absolutely. Like, to be fair, I, I think a lot of people would have gone for him as well. Yeah. 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 And that's the thing. Because you're at the Chiefs and you think this could be a prolific offence. I want the guys that are going to be scoring. Oh. Sammy Watkins trade straight away. It's it? so hard though at the time. Tyreek's out. You're thinking, I've I've just dropped onto the new Tyreek. He is going to be great. Yeah. And then he has a bum game and you convince yourself, oh, it's only a game. Yeah. 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 Right. It's all right. <laughs> well, did last week. Yeah. So it's very yeah. hard because the last thing you want to do is go, oh, this has been the number one wide receiver yeah. of the week. I'll give it to you and then I'll watch you smash out the next three weeks. Yeah. Well, I feel like a right Wally because the player you traded to me has, has done average. Yeah. It does feel a little bit hard. like you get trapped in an abusive relationship, doesn't it, with players yeah. like that? Yeah. 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 Where all yeah. they do is hurt you and all you've got for them is love. <laughs> yeah. And at some point, you've, you've got to let it go. You, you, but you start justifying everything. You do, yeah, yeah. The, it the wasn't them, it was me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I could have played him that week. <laughs> that week one before from what case, you're like, this is why he was drafted before OBJ. <laughs> oh my god! It finally, he's found his form. <laughs> no, no, he hasn't. No. He's still Sammy Watkins, yes. and that's what you should know when you draft these players. You should look at it and say, "I'm drafting Sammy Watkins with a view that I will trade him at some point during the season after he has a good game." That's what you should always. It buy would be into very interesting that. if you played fantasy football with numbers instead of names. <laughs> but I, I did when I first started. I keep trying. No one wants me <laughs> yeah, to. I, I, I had no idea where any of the players were. So you know, you just go off the stats, and it's so much easier to cut people. It's so much easier yeah, to, to cut yeah. them. It's before you humanise them. Once you humanise yeah. them, then yeah, and you, you, know, should have, uh, you should have. You should have done that with Godwin. Though, should I should have done. Yeah. No, no, no. On stats, he was droppable. In one of the. Oh. In one of the, he was in one of our earliest episodes this year. I put out there that I was trying to make a trade, OBJ for Landry and Kittle, and everyone was like, "That's ridiculous. You should give more 
than OBJ for those two players yeah. because they're, because that's a completely unfair trade. However, what that would be is trading a first round pick for a third and a fifth round pick. And most people wouldn't want to do that. They would keep hold of their first round pick. Yeah. But as soon as you attach names to it, people are like, no, that's a bad trade now. It's like, but it's a good trade in terms of a normal draft. And that's the problem, is that you look at it and you think, well, I've got, they've got names oh, attached now. Well, that's what it is. Those where the players got drafted, and you would you you would happily give up your fifth and third for another first round I wouldn't, pick. I wow. wouldn't. I'd rather have the more the more picks in those first five rounds are more beneficial. And if I could have got two of the top three picks, now we're talking. Yeah, well, the, this well, is uh, this yeah, is I it. guess where this is where you draft. You've got to try and take that step back and realize what you're actually dealing with. And each, to each person is their own. Yeah. Where, where did you get OBJ? Where 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 did you pick him up? Was it twelfth? Well, no, I think it was, it was the start of the second 13. round, wasn't it? I, yeah. I got picked at 12 oh, So technically oh, it was the second see. round. It was just the order I took them in. <laughs> but it was the second round pick, technically. Technically. <laughs> technically. <laughs> Who was your first round pick? Malcolm Gordon. Malcolm Gordon, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> My team's doing fine, everyone. It was all, all a part of the calculated risk. Don't let them tell you different. <laughs> I'm winning, they're not. <laughs> Talking about things that sound like that, should we have a catch-up? Oh, oh yeah, oh, definitely. Now, yeah, I'm actually, gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to get yeah, mine. Yeah, right. I'm feeling all right oh, with yeah. this. I'm, I'm going to get mine okay. out of the way first. Right. <laughs> the update on Derek Carr's situation is he no longer has Antonio Brown to be throwing to. The Raiders look like gash. Nothing makes sense anymore. Their whole team is a mess. It's is it the point where cows ring that we buy any car? <laughs> <laughs> I need a favour. <laughs> Does cow want to double down? Now you're admitting you failed that bet. Have you got another one? Are you going to back it up? Yeah. Okay, that's okay. interesting. So mm. for for Derek Carr currently to break the top ten in QBs, he's got to be scoring rather a fucking lot more than he currently is. It's not going to happen. We, However, we've established that. Yeah. There are a lot of QBs going down, which could work for him if another 15... Yeah. <laughs> currently, I think he's the 20th, 21st QB in fantasy scoring. Okay. And that's including the dozen or so quarterbacks that have gone down. <laughs> yeah. Well, the problem is, he's only just outscoring Mason Rudolph and Dan Jones. <laughs> Who've played two Half weeks. the number again. <laughs> yeah. That's the problem. That's the problem. Oh, he's just bad, isn't he? Yeah. Like, it's something now, wrong with him. As, as an actual NFL quarterback, he's still doing fine. His passer rating is good. His accuracy on targets is within the top three. He is actually good at his job. It's just, he's at the Raiders, and not very much happens there. Yeah. And they're not a strong back offense. Back and, and even when they win games... Oh, I can't argue like, with they, they, they beat the Colts. And somehow Derek Carr was still not fantasy useful. Yeah. They only beat the Colts because of our survivor, yeah? Do you think that's where it was? I'm pretty <laughs> sure. <laughs> Everything yeah. I touched last that's week self just job. Like, okay. fell to me. <laughs> <laughs> I was, that was the kiss of death last week. And the final kiss that I gave in this podcast was to the Colts. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very strange game. It I was know. a shocking... I, I no one never saw it, expected that. No. Never. No one saw it. Never. Very weird. Well, there was a lot of results last night, last week. Right? There you go. See, a weird week. Speaking of which, I think it's unfair for us to mention that we we concede an only uh, beer bet. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Took us up on Twitter and um, <laughs> and Beth because we were unanimous in in thinking we were the Bengals united would, behind the Bengals, yeah. which we'll never do again. Which <laughs> we are ashamed yeah. with ourselves about. <laughs> So Lee, well done. You've you've just gone through blind faith. A nice yeah. out on us. <laughs> See, you've never bet against the Steelers, will you? Whoever you put them up against, with now the missing all of their players, like literally all of their players. Some people are homers. Yeah. Some people are homers, and there's nothing you can do about That's it. Right. Apart well, from abuse that later on in the season when, when we all unite when against the, the Steelers with another team <laughs> <laughs> and claim them drinks back. <laughs> <laughs> How was your bet going there talking about the Bills? Good. I expected Chicken us to knock, yeah. I, I expected us to lose this one. And I do think this is going to be a very tough one as well. The I don't think you did expect to lose this one. I think going into the week you said yeah, we'll beat no, the Patriots, we'll yeah. upset them. <laughs> when I was calculating my eleven and five pre season. <laughs> and that was before we were actually going ahead with what I thought would be happening. Um, so I I had Calculated this as a loss in my eleven and five. So you're still yeah. okay with eleven and five? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three and one, and we've looking all right, isn't it? Looked really yeah. good on defense. So if Josh Allen isn't playing, 
next week. Does if Josh Allen isn't playing, 13 and 3. You think you'll get the ball? <laughs> you, are you joking. willing to go down a record, Ian? Yeah. I am joking. Yeah. You're not that confident. I have the power of the edit. Yeah. <laughs> For the benefit of listeners out there that can't see what's happening, he had this like stone face going on when he seemed to try and make us believe for a second there that he meant what he was saying. Yeah. But it is yeah. looking looking all right for the Bills yeah. and your back. Yeah, 11 and 5, I'm happy with that, and I think we're on course. I, th- I think I might be heading in the right direction not as confidently as you are but it's certainly certainly looking alright for me just so, a little bit more where is <coughs> Will Disley just as a reminder Will Disley's fifth 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 overall that's what you projected who's ahead of him I'd love to claim that top it is, three yeah. but I did say top three maybe my mouth did run away with me yeah but he's currently top five and he's in standard four. standard scoring he's a point away from being top three he's a point off Travis Kelsey so he's, he's getting there. They traded away there. Vanette. Yeah, yes. yeah, he's the the old. But they did there. pick up Luke Wilson, who who's back up. Could, yeah, back up. Yeah, they're they're comfy with Disley now with it. So just to support this notion now, a lot of the fantasy football other broadcaster type folks, including Pro Football Focus, who I put a lot of mileage in. Uh, are now talking about Disley in a favourable way, saying that he is yeah. a legitimate player that should be picked up in leagues. Um, you know, there's a lot of talk around Disley that he is a real deal player. If you've been listening to us, you should have drafted him in the first place. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, there's there's clearly talk going around now about this character, and that he is going to perhaps start to see Gronkian levels of usage. <laughs> <laughs> And how are you with your bet? I think probably the ben? safest of all of us. I think so. What, what was it again? It was never uh, in doubt, was it? Never in doubt. Nick Chubb, Chubb to outscore, outscore Lev Bell in half point PPR. That's right. And, and it currently stands at? I, th- I believe that Chubb has got 80 81 one points. Yeah. And uh, Bell's, about 40, Bell's 40. just over 40, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, five points. he's had an extra game. Wanted, oh, yeah. wanted to game though, eh? An extra game oh. where he scored as many points as Bell scored. That's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> and he is a great running back. Yeah, he, he was unbelievable. He gains yards uh, breaking, after contact. Break breaking tackles. for an 88 yard run though is a bit ridiculous. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but he was fast. It, he had a good the, game up until that point. He had two touchdowns and plenty of yards. <laughs> and then he just went. He just went stratosphere. He just went right. He doubled his Boom. yardage on a single play. Yeah, it's a bit better than four nets. Uh... Hey, I knew that was going to come off. <laughs> I knew that was going to come off. Right? <laughs> but the fact remains is that that one break run significantly improved Nick Chubb's day. Yeah. And it, when you watch the play as well, it was completely blown. Like there was no coverage whatsoever. Not a player came within like six yards of him until he'd covered like 40 yards yeah it was mental absolutely mental as long as the Browns can play as long as they can get ahead he's savage it's when they're playing behind yeah. that, that's the worry uh, uh, I spotted that last year with him as well yeah. yeah his usage was really good when they were ahead but they, they just weren't really getting much out of him before so Freddie's come in but he hasn't changed up too much for him well that's normal though for a team to Use the running backs less when they're ahead. Uh, it it is, yeah. He's not that well, kind of change of pace <laughs> back, though, is he? He's not. A, he's not. He's not your your spry receiver who's gonna. Yeah, but he seems know, whenever he's relied on for the receiving, he does well. Oh, he's great. Yeah. He can catch the ball. But you know, if if they had Hunt, yeah, as the pairing, you would see Chubb as the guy who runs down that clock, well, who this, hammers the defense, and then. This is the danger for Chubb now, isn't it? Yeah, he's, that's the, he's doing all right and he's getting your good with it. Down but the line, isn't it? I think. Are they going to use him so much that they think actually we, we do need to save him a little bit? Let's use Hunt a bit. Hunt, uh, no, because Hunt can get in the head and then they'll swap over to Chubb and he can hammer home for a few touchdowns. It depends. <laughs> it depends. Or get him in goal line. And he, but it, it, it does make things a little more sketchy for you when he is back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but if we can keep establishing this lead, we'll be okay. We'll be fine. <laughs> we'll be fine. Not not are every team any, uh, plays the Chiefs. Are there any serious the com- play competitors the for Bell on his touch count? No, not no. in any shape or form, really, is there? Elijah Maguire, I think. He's did, no did Bill Powell still make the roster? No, he got injured, didn't he? Bell's? Oh, I'm not sure. Yeah, I forgot they got Powell. So um, they've also got a rookie there as well, who may eventually look to be something, but. 
In essence, no, okay. no, not even close. Yeah, it's it's going to be entirely Bell. So Bell's touches are fairly secure. He just doesn't he, make a big play. He got 20 rushes and 10 catches in the week three performance. This is this is what's looking like it might put a dent in Ooh. it for Ben with it. Is the, Especially in the consistent, yeah, the consistent <laughs> use for Bell will catch him up over time. Yes. Especially yep. if Hunt starts to take some off. But right yep. now it's looking... 40 points is a big, a big amount of points to catch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a 10 point a game average. But I don't know, because Bell's well, got behind. Yeah, they've the got, game, he's got a bye week as well. Um, yeah. So yeah, it, it, it'll soon close that gap. I'm you know. confident. More confident than I am that <laughs> Bill's going to win 11 games. Yeah. But, <laughs> you know? Well, we've got a nice stretch yeah. of teams. But have you got a quarterback? Whether we have or not, we've got a heck of a defence. Survivor. So we've got this rubbish situation with Survivor where I don't do very well. I back the Patriots for the week. They look like they're going to lose, but then came good, which is nice. Right, Dan? It's nice. You happy for me because I got a win, right? Fuck off. <laughs> so, uh, so I won with the Patriots and no one wanted me to. They're the villains. <laughs> Did everyone else lose, though? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you lost as well, Cal. We We decided off... I heard that you were going to be a half point this week. <laughs> Something to do with an admin error. May have been on our part, may have been on your part. No it's one in wants... your wretched handwriting. No, no one wants to go back and do any fact checking on this. So uh, we've, we've come to the decision that you got a half a point yeah. and the rest of us got absolutely nothing and we cursed everyone we picked. It was a good week for us, lads. Oh, yeah. A great week of football. <laughs> There was so many upsets last week. I was upset. So, yeah. <laughs> I was just thrilled. Uh, we're going to try and blaze our way through uh, the week's matchups upcoming and see if any of us want to buy in for taking it as a survivor pick. The Thursday night game is Rams, Rams Seahawks. Rams Seahawks. I think this will be a high scoring mess that could go either way. Yeah. I think I favour the Seahawks. I'd go Rams. And there you go. That um, literally tells the story, doesn't it? It could go either way. Do we think it'll be a low-scoring game? No, it's going to be a high score. There yeah, you go. I do think it will be. Jags Panthers, high or low scoring? Low. Um, Midland. Get the fuck scores, out. Three we scores apiece. 24-27, <laughs> yeah. something like that. I reckon 20-something points each. I think so that's the Panthers. Right. But I think the Panthers do it. Yeah, fuck Panthers. <laughs> yeah. Panthers victory like a, a Although nine. the Jaguars have been surprising the past couple of weeks with yeah. some of their victory. I, I, I did not we're taking this. win that. We're yeah. totally taking this. Unless McCaffrey goes nuts, I see both of them scoring less than 20 points. The, the Panthers have had some soft matchups and now they're up against someone proper and they're feeling motivated so the Jags are winning this How's one. your run defence, Kurt? What? The Jaguars? We defend good. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> It'll need to be very good. Do we need to talk Pats and Redskins? The Patriots versus the Patriots. We'll skip that one over. Yeah. Yeah. The question yeah. is, Patriots how embarrassing will it be for the Redskins? Are we yeah. talking very embarrassing, incredibly embarrassing, or... Miami Dolphins yeah. embarrassing? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think how we should grade this is, how many snaps does Jarrett Stidham get? Yeah. <laughs> Before he throws an interception. <laughs> yeah, it does, pay, does Brady have to be brought back in? Uh, Bills Titans. That one's more interesting. I'm, I'm going That's with a, Titans. That is a tough one. I'm going with the Bills. Because okay. I think the ti- I think the Bills will be able to stop the Henry train and it, make Mariota throw. And no one so, wants Mariota to throw in. <laughs> no, the purpose is wow. fantasy. Yeah, she to have well, yeah. Do we think that this will be a high or low scoring game? Low. Stay away. So Stay don't away. start your Tennessee players even if you think they're going to win. Low scoring, high scoring. I think the Bills drag you down and beat you with stupid. That's that's kind of their method so far. I, I think the Bills do it. They're, um, they're not a prolific offence though. So I would expect... The, the Bills will score low and the Titans will also score We've low. We've been scoring well though. We had a bad game against the Patriots with a very good defence. But we were going into that game a top 10 offence. Yeah, I think may surprise <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> Titans <laughs> defence is also pretty it good. Is, that, that has to and be said. They've, they've got AJ Brown which could make the difference in the receiving. You think that much of AJ Brown? He's on a bit of form at the moment. And I think that 
when when you're looking at it, there's not really anything to separate the receiving cores apart from Brown. Well, so he'll be that. shadowed by Corey White Davis caught a pass. <laughs> Corey Davis <laughs> caught one. Bills, the Bills cornerbacks are going to shut them down. Yeah, yeah. they're not going to get any. <clears throat> but I think I think the Titans answer. cornerbacks will also shut down the Bills mm. passing game. Mm. So as much as that exists, it. <laughs> it, it'll yeah. be mostly defensive. But I think that you could I see the, the Titans receivers be a little bit even, more productive. Even if it's Barkley started, I think the Bills will. If you're a fan of watching a good punt, oh, game yeah. you want to watch, you're going to see a lot of course punting. There'll be a lot of a lot of field goals. I feel. Be so, yeah. Yeah. so for our loyal international following out there, if it hasn't already been made clear to you, Dan likes the Bills, and we'll talk extensively about them. <laughs> yes. We'll move on. Yeah. <laughs> Raven Steelers is a, Ooh, another one with it, isn't it? Because. I want to say Ravens, but I, after last I week, do, but they, the Steelers' defense has really taken an upturn. Yeah, that Minka Fitzpatrick, whether it's entirely on his addition to the Steelers, did you see him get out. chucked by Ushak? <laughs> no, 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 oh, it was so good when they played the Niners. Ushak, right? Oh, I did see that. Yeah, yeah. Ushak takes Minka in from his side, and he literally oh, just, just flips the guy flips. over like. Whoosh! Get out of my face! <laughs> <laughs> totally dismissive of him. So, who thinks of Ravens? I think the Ravens. I think ben. the Ravens. Cal? I'd, I'd go Ravens, yeah. Just so we're aware, but Juju Smith Schuster, James Connor, and Vance McDonald did not practice today. Yeah. yeah. I'm oh. also going to go the Ravens. Oh. Lee's going to go the Ravens. Lee, if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's move on. <laughs> Sorry. Cardinal. <Lee. laughs> Cardinals Bengals. This oh, is Cardinals. the I clash of the trash, low light of the week, isn't it? It's two really bad teams duking it out to see I who's the, the worst. Cardinals. Bengals. The Bengals the are the Cardinals. worst team. No, no, the Bengals are going to win. Oh! Yeah, not content with backing them for one week and looking very foolish. Ben <laughs> wants to go in again. <laughs> Double down. <laughs> it's fine, but they have no receivers left. None. None. <laughs> None. <laughs> yeah. But he's by himself. <laughs> <laughs> Triple covered. <laughs> It'll be okay. Uh, I, I'm going to have to go with the Cardinals for it. At least they can draw games. <laughs> <laughs> Falcons, Texans. I like Texans. Texans. I like Texans first. Texans. I think the Falcons have got enough. The Texans' defense was very good. It, it really pressured the. Well, the Falcons have one of the worst going, offensive lines. I'm going Texans. I think I it's going to be a safe. rough day. For I think a good day for just Hooper. Me? Yeah, good Matthew. day for Hooper and Julio, but otherwise. Mm-hmm. Texans. Matty Ice is going to get. Is this going to be a high score? Okay, so we've we we're going to say that the Steelers Ravens game is probably going to be a decent amount of points. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would say. I would say. Bengals Cardinals probably going to be a bit messy, but both That'd defenses are pretty scoring weak. Game, high scoring think, probably. Yeah. So a shootout. And Falcons Texans high scoring. I yep. hate it because I'm playing against Deshaun Watson <laughs> like everywhere, um, and he had a terrible week last week. So no doubt he's going to bounce back and take my face off. Yeah. But there we go. Are any of them going to outscore the Bucks in the Saints game? Oh, no, because that feels that, like that it's got to be the like big scoring. The game of the week for me. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Sadly, it's, Godwin isn't practicing, but he, he, he didn't. You know, it's a Wednesday. A lot of these players. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have a bit of faith in the Saints defense and say the Saints. You, I can understand why you would do that. Too. I think everyone would take the Saints as the favorite. I think everyone would take the Rams as the favorite last week. Yeah. I yeah. like. Yeah, yeah, I like I think, this. Hype Bruce train. Arians, yeah. Why yes. not? The underdog got him, box. Got him going. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. their defense looked good at times against the Rams. Yeah, yeah. It's looked quite good. I, I just think the Saints as a team overall probably got a bit more togetherness. Yeah. It's the Kamara, isn't it? Kam- again, I'm playing Kamara everywhere. So, it's <laughs> thing. so were we? Were we all can... Saints apart from? Oh, uh, box. I'm box. box. Yeah. Split. I think this is a potential high-scoring game that could go either way. I'd really like to see the Bucks win it. Just don't think they will. No. Split 50 50, two Saints, two Bucks. Vikings, Giants. Yay. The this Vikings. is weird because we take the Vikings, wouldn't we? Everyone yeah. would just automatically take the Vikings, but they just haven't been able to put up points, whereas the Giants weirdly have. Mm. Dan Jones leading a resurgence. No, I, I go Vikings for this one. Giants. Yeah. Vikings for me. Vikings. See, I feel the upset burning. too. I feel the Giants probably win this. Okay, it's weird. Agreeing with you. Bears Raiders, is anyone going to bet against the Bears defence? 
Sadly, I think the Bears' defense this is, the, is just uh, too strong. The London game as well, isn't it? Is it? Ooh. The Wembley. Uh, Tottenham, actually, because yeah. Bayern Munich had tweeted because they scored uh, seven yeah. against Tottenham. <laughs> so we're the first. We scored the first touchdown in uh, Tottenham <laughs> oh, Stadium. Such, <laughs> such comical German humour. Yeah. <laughs> bears. So four, me. four bears. Yeah. It's got to be. Yeah. Really. You can't sensibly back the Raiders. Wow, we just cursed the Bears. Yeah. Eagles, Jets. Eagles, Eagles, go birds! Yeah, it can't not be can Their defense. Yeah. It is Jim Schwartz that's still a defensive coordinator. They're, they're still a top tier team. The, they're just not and, elite. And the Jets, unfortunately, aren't. It's not just that they aren't; is that they could have been, but currently aren't because they've just, yeah, they've had too many, aren't they? Too many injuries. injuries. By weeks also taking a bit of a what's it with it because he. It could be a benefit for them with it. Yeah, because it's week. given them a chance. To but I never, I never like going, jump back. <laughs> never yeah, like going in on a, a loss on a on a bye week. If like Donald, that. I think if Donald plays because they've got the extra week off to scheme for it, it could be that the Jets pull up, pull an upset here. The atmosphere is going to be absolutely toxic. Of course it is. You you don't, you're you, involved. <laughs> you don't. You don't want a week where everything's gone wrong. You've got no positives coming from it. And you've got to stew on it for an extra week. I don't disagree, but the more I look at it now, the more I think maybe this won't be the rollover like we're all saying it is. Yeah, I think the Eagles. But I, I got yeah, a lot, I, I'm I, with you. I, I, I've got I a lot of faith in the Jets be coming in. A like, blowout. So, so I do think the Jets. Will psychology be. of it. So the, the Bucks Saints game will be a high scorer. The Vikings Giants game I don't think will be a particularly high scoring game. I think both no, I mean, both teams are in the teens, or, aren't they? Yeah, something teens, like that. Twenties. Yeah. Bears Raiders could be a very low scoring affair as well. Yeah. The Bears defense is very stifling, and their offense looks weak. So this could be a game of field goals. Yeah. Um, Jets Eagles though, I think that's a game that could go into the twenty point zone. I think the Eagles put up 30 and the yeah. Jets 20. I don't see it. Well, I, I saw the Eagles putting up 30 and the Jets putting up maybe two scores. See, yeah, I was looking best. at like 21-14, something like that. I think the Jets are going to get pummeled. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah, it might really be a, a 10, well, the Eagles 16 run, point, run yeah, 15 points tops Ooh. for them. Well, Chargers Broncos. So the Broncos are like absolute dogs this season. They're just being torn up. The run game against them has been absolutely devastating. They've not been able to stop it consistently. And... Offensively, they've looked a little bit weak themselves. It's charges. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, the charges. Yeah. yeah, you've got uh, to go charges. But the Chargers bungled it against other teams. I, the, I think it could be a bit of an upset, the Broncos. It'd be fucking outrageous for them, wouldn't it, to get their first win against the Chargers. That'd yeah. be amazing for the Broncos. I could I, see it, though, because the, the Chargers are just having so many injuries on... On yes, they are defense. so knocked about. Um, and, and the receiving core now, mm. with him and going on IR as yeah. well. It's all a bit of a mess. I fear it could. The Broncos might sneak it. So the so Broncos, the Broncos. Are looking to get the first win. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. On the road against the Chargers. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm going against the the tide here, definitely. But I I think that could be an upset. So I'll go with that. Yeah. Ben? Chargers. <laughs> yeah, Chargers are here as well. Yeah, and they'll just Cal's going to blue every time. Yeah. No point asking. Run it down the Packers space. Cowboys. That could be before a good last game. Week, before last week, you would have been saying, "Oh, that's going to be yeah, that's going to be something." I still think it will be. It just won't be as okay. So in the Bron- so the Broncos probably don't score very well. The Chargers probably do score quite well. Now the Cowboys, do they look capable of scoring? The Say twenty points that they need to beat the Packers. Yeah, yeah. They did exactly. last week though, did they? No, they were a mess. They were all over the show. But Who did they play last week? Ah. Saints, and and he just couldn't get anything started. No, uh, Zeke couldn't establish decent running game. The the throws were off. That looked unsettled. Big... Witten fumbled the ball. You know, yeah, old yeah. sure well, hands right. himself. Yeah, you know it's bad. It was just an off game for yeah. them. Yeah. But I think this, I, this has got the potential to be an outstanding game. Yeah, I'm um, great. I think oh, Buck Saints or this, this one. This is the two matchups. Luckily, they don't clash, so you can watch them both. For me, it's the Cowboys and Zeke goes off big. It's bold. Yeah. Mm. I like I like the Cowboys. Feeling it. I think I think it's a, it'd be a, it'd be a great game to watch because it'll push Rogers and then he's good to watch. Yeah, as opposed to it, it'll be a good game. It'll be a good game to watch. Uh, I'm I'm coming from the other way. I I think that both teams are coming off losses. They're both going to focus a bit more on defense and and trying to shore things up a little bit. I think it might be a bit of a slugfest. I don't don't see it being a big scorer. I'm not feeling much for this either. I think the Packers probably take it in a very ugly, grindy game. 
I'd go with the Cowboys taking it in an ugly, grindy game. Not much between them, though. Maybe a field goal victory late on. Colts Chiefs should be a pretty easy review. Yeah, Chiefs win. Chiefs. Chiefs. Yeah. Do you think they win with bad points? Yeah. God, I, I think they've no, got some good points against them. Colts defence is great. Leonard's yeah. coming back. I think they'll they'll get ahead, um, and the Colts will struggle to match the points. So yeah. what are you talking like forty twenty? Yeah, thirties, thirties twenties. Yeah, yeah. So we all agree that the Chiefs probably going to win. Another you know, easy one. Uh, Browns and then, smashing it. Yeah. Oh yeah, obviously yeah. yeah. Bra- Browns Niners. So um, Monday night football is the Browns at the Niners. Last game of the week, the one to watch. Um, can the Browns repeat their scalp? Uh, because the Niners would be a big scalp to take at this point. They've established yeah. they've established the game plan now. They've settled down. It's, <laughs> it's into it. Let's just hope Landry's back and he'll be yeah. okay. No, a concussion he, he'll miss. Oh, damn. <laughs> um, I think it'll be a very tough game. The 49ers run defence is great. Their offence has been dynamic and variable, yeah. which will stifle the Browns' defence. But... The Browns can get at Jimmy, and he isn't looked at Brett. No, he hasn't. Um, that is, that is Coleman. Coleman back for the Niners. Who? Tevin Coleman. Uh, I believe so, yeah. 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 But the Browns have been very good at stopping the run game. So, well, no, um, but as a pass catching back. Yeah, yeah then he's well, quite you a good there. Yeah, that's yeah, a pass yeah, catching yeah. back. So, yeah. Yeah. so, you're going with the Browns? I'm going with the Browns, <laughs> but I think it, it, will <laughs> be, okay. it will be a tricky game. Yeah. That one. It's not, yeah. it's not Niners for me. Calf? I'm in the nines on this one. Yeah, I'm in the nines as well. Yeah. <laughs> so this this is going to be a theme against the Browns, isn't it? Yeah. Ben picks him. We all disagree. Yeah. So who's your team for the week then? Uh, I think that the Bears are going to beat the Raiders. I think you're playing easy mode. Uh, <laughs> Low hanging fruit. It is the name of the game. I don't know. I'm just trying to use my Bears pick now because I don't want to yeah. pick them later. And their offense is so terrible. To be honest, it doesn't yeah. take a lot to beat them. The Raiders, the Raiders could be. It could, it could be. A let's, let's hey, go. Hey, no, it could. Though. Let's face it. They shocked us with the Colts last week. I would never have seen them beating the Colts. So. <laughs> are you uh, are you pushing the boat out, Dan? Are you going, going, going for something I'm going Chiefs. Well, that's an easy win. Uh, easy yep. win. Yes, it is. Yep. <laughs> There's not much to say on that nope. one. <laughs> Cal? I am actually so confident that the 49ers win, I'm going to back that. <gasps> oh! The 49ers! Oh! Yeah. Big picks, 49ers. Anything made you sway on that particularly? Yeah. I've been watching some of their tape. I've been seeing how they play. And, and good. I've just thought about it at the end as we've come to the back of their segment. And I've just thought... They're going to fuck the brown shit up and it's going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> then, yeah, I think that they've probably got them. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Ben. We'll see. Yeah. I'm also we'll sorry, Dan. Home, the, the Titans are going to mess up that's, the Bills a little bit. Team, the defense the off. Okay. The, the Titans' defense, I think, has got enough to stop the, the Bills' offense more than the Bills' offense can stop yeah. the uh, Also, Titans. I think it's important that we make it clear that we are betting against each other's teams as well. So yeah. I am betting against the Browns because I will enjoy being right about this. <laughs> oh. I will certainly rub it in a lot more. Oh, yeah. Totally. <laughs> yeah. And anything that makes the Bills look bad is something that I want to talk about. <laughs> so we've come to the end of what I think was quite a long episode. Um Seemingly, we had quite a lot to talk about, or at least make fun of. We did the injury list. <laughs> yeah, that must have taken an hour by itself. We'll get to you again next week, hopefully with a less ridiculous report. Um, hopefully with a less ridiculous week to report on. See you next time for some more fantasy football updates. Mm-hmm.